Yo, what is up guys and welcome back to another episode of Slice of Shonen. I'm your host, The Cloudy Crow, and today we'll be reacting to Tower of God episode 6. Now in the last episode, we finally finished the crown game, and funny enough, even though we finished this crown game, there was no clear victor in the end. Now the reason why is because during the crown game, in the final round, we had our team with Bomb, Kuhn, and Rack. They were defending the crown, and there were a couple other teams that were kind of charging at them. And one of those other teams was Rachel's team with her goons that supposedly wiped everyone else in the challenge. I believe it was the second floor challenge where they wiped everyone and so they created this whole crown game situation so that I'm guessing so that they can kind of gauge how truly strong their team is. And so out of this final round it seemed like two people stood out the most from everyone outside of Bomb's team which was the girl that asked Rachel if it was okay if she killed everyone or took out everyone and it was this other girl that had like this black suit on and this staff and those two they were fighting against each other they were popping off they were completely wiping the competition and then come to find out i believe rachel actually she was standing next to bomb on the throne and she told him i think she said something along the lines of like it's okay we won't let them hurt you or we won't let them take the crown from you and then that's when bomb kind of started thinking like wait is this actually rachel and then of course the girl with the staff came in to seize the crown she was about to hit Rachel and then I think bomb jumped in the way and he got hit instead and he was kind of knocked unconscious but then that was the moment when his powers finally kicked in and I believe these powers were given to him by the sword and if you think back to the first episode when the sword asked him what like he wanted to use her power for he said he just wanted the strength to protect rachel and so coincidentally in that situation rachel was in danger so that's when he kind of snapped there was this huge explosion of energy all over the place i believe they said it was some form of shinso or shinsu that same energy that was in that like water wall bomb was somehow able to conjure that or draw that out and it completely vaporized the crown so no one ended up winning in the end so now it's actually kind of funny because the reward was that the winner of this crown game would make it to the top of the tower so it's kind of funny how no one ended up winning because that is kind of like a op reward if you really think about it but anyways we're back to square one and it's time to see where things go from here so if you guys are excited for the episode make sure to leave a like comment your thoughts on that episode down below and subscribe for more slice shown content make sure to check out the cloud crowd discord link will be in the description and also consider supporting me and my channel through patreon for as low as two dollars but with that all out of the way let's get right into this episode all right, so this is the part of the episode where you guys will be grabbing your source videos. If you do not have one of your own, I will have one linked in the description. So all that you have to do is go into the description, click the first link that you see, bring up the video and get ready to sync it with me because we will be starting episode six in three, two, one, go. Okay. Let me check my value. Okay. <sighs> All right. So uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention real quick is I wonder if Rachel actually told her teammates about the fact that she's trying to hide her identity from Bomb or from everyone. Because when Bomb was starting to question it last episode and he like vocalized it, I think he said out loud, like, Rachel, is that you? Just when he was kind of about to reach out to her, that's when the big dude on her team came in the way and kind of cut him off. So, I mean, I don't know. If it's not obvious to him by now, then I don't know what to tell him. But I think he knows that it's her because, yeah, he, of course he does because he jumped in the way to save her. Like, he knows, he knows. But I wonder where things are going to go from here, because originally we started off in different groups, right? Like, there was the group of all of the people with Bomb. How do I explain this? There was, like, our group, which had, like, Bomb's team, and the team with the, um, 
Anak and all the other teams in one group. And then there was another group that had Rachel's team. Now, of course, she wiped everyone in there. So I'm guessing now is she a part of our group? Are we going to bump into her more in the future? Are we going to figure out why she's hiding from Bomb? So many questions, man. Dang, man. My man had some long, flowing, luscious locks. And it looks like he cut it all off. Coon's not here to play any games. I guess that makes sense. Because if she were to ever be in danger, Bomb would of course jump into that same danger to save her. And probably vice versa. What the heck is he up to? Oh, was he snooping? <laughs> My man tried to book it. Oh, okay. He was checking on Bomb. This dude is massive. How does he even fit through the door? <laughs> only a handsome one oh my gosh that's oh my gosh she's firing shots <laughs> it's almost refreshing Oh, here she is. Mm-hmm. Imposter! Dang! <laughs> this man. Oh, Rachel! <laughs> She's been snacking on him this whole time. And he thinks Bomb ate them all. Looks like he's good. Oh yeah, that was a pretty nasty whack to the dome, the last episode. Oh, he knows what Bomb's about to ask, and he's trying to kind of dodge the question. Okay, so they're gonna have like a front line, back line support. Oh! Okay, so it's kind of the same thing, just different names. The lighthouse? What does that mean?
Mm hmm. Wave controller. Support. Okay. So does this mean every team is going to have five members now? So they can have all of those points? Or is it still just teams of three? Dang. Dude, I love Rack, man. Okay. He acts like he has this tough exterior, but he's a softy on the inside that loves chocolate bars. <laughs> Okay, so it seems like he's following through with it. Oh man, he's got some new drip. <laughs> A pet shop. Oh my gosh! <laughs> A custom collar, dude. Bigger heads are more desirable. What is going on? Oh, snap! Hey, Bob is looking kind of clean right now. I'm liking this new fit. He's got the headband and everything. Oh man. Okay, I kinda like this. At least she's not as heartless as I thought like two episodes ago. This is your time, bomb. Oh, I wonder if he's gonna get his sword back. Wait, no! Didn't he, um... Oh, man. Formed a contract while he was asleep. Oh, I was going to say, um, I forgot the deal they made with Anak, but if he lost, he had to give the sword to her, right? And if he won, he could keep it. You smell rather appealing. Oh, snap. This thing looks insane. It's a shackle. Dang. Whoa! He's the only one that's exhausted from it. So I'm guessing the others had, like, familiars or whatever that probably weren't as powerful or intimidating
All right, he seems cool. Dang, to the weak. I don't know about that. Oh? So maybe forming his contract took a toll on him too, and he was just trying to hide it? The spear bearer test. Okay. It should be interesting. Oh man, who threw that? Who threw that? Oh. Dang. Okay. So he didn't like being shown up. He's going to train, come back stronger. Hey, the boy is stopping by. So we're split into groups based on our roles, and we're going to train or go through exams with the other people in our roles. Oh, dang. Wow. Guess this is eating away at her, too. Is it worth whatever she's trying to climb to the top of the tower for? Is it worth... Losing someone you care so much about for? Wait, they have the participants cooking? I just realized. <laughs> Friends list. <laughs> okay, so they're trying to get along with others. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I didn't remember the deal they had exactly. And they cut ties with her. <laughs> you call them ugly earrings? Yeah, hey, I'm not picking any sides in this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh by committing seppuku <laughs> this dude is such a goofball, man.
Hmm? Oh, okay, okay. Man. Oh. Okay. Those apples look unappetizing. Wasn't she your partner? You don't even know her name? Oh, man. Jesus. So you won't die, but it'll hurt like hell. You're responsible for your own inju injuries. That seems to be the theme of this anime so far. <laughs> or at least this competition. Oh, a knock is not playing any games. Yeah, why is the knock so on edge? I think she needs to sit back and chill out, like have some fun. She's been so serious lately. Computer class. Ah, oh, you got it. <laughs> hmm. There's not much on both of them. Oh, man. <laughs> Bombs already popping off. That boy is gifted. She's definitely got a plan. Is she trying to bait her? Oh my gosh! He got caught in the crossfire? She wasn't even going after him. Oh, she's using a knock to shove everyone else off. Dang, poor guy. She's already dead. <laughs> These dudes are such pushovers, man. They're not even putting up a fight. Oh. Shinso? Shinsu. Oh, that was kind of slick. Oh, no. Nah. Oh my gosh! 
She grabbed her by her foot and slammed her. This is the first time we ever saw a knock get handled. A knock's orphan. What? Her niece. So is she a Knox daughter? Oh, look at little Anak. That's adorable. The best chicken pies in the world, eh? Hey. Oh! Was killed! So someone went after him? What is going on here? Oh, snap! And Dorsey. So then did she inherit the sword from her mom? Because they said those weapons were only given to princesses of Jihad. And I'm guessing she's not technically a princess of Jihad. Her mother was, and she was the daughter. So, I don't know how that hierarchy works exactly, but... Hmm. So I'm guessing she got the sword from her. But... And, um, in Dorsey, she called her, her niece, she called, um, the girl we're looking at now her niece, I don't know if her actual name's a knock or not, but she called her her niece, so I'm guessing she was the older Anox, her mother's sister. Okay, okay. So that explains why they were calling her imposter, because she's not actually a princess of Jihad. She's the daughter of a princess of Jihad, and she inherited that sword from her mother, I'm guessing. So, interesting, interesting. And that explains also why she was so kind of on edge once she found out that Bomb had Black, Black March. Because she knew that okay black march that ties in with a princess of jihad and she's trying to get revenge on all the other princesses for killing her mother and father question <laughs> mark so once she saw that he had the sword she was like super on edge but then she realized he wasn't an actual princess and so she just took the sword for herself but it's weird because in dorsey she doesn't have her weapon with her i don't know if they're all swords but she doesn't have her weapon with her, which is interesting. If this is what I think it is, this is just from what I've gathered my thoughts on what's going on, but I have no idea. This could literally spin anywhere. But overall, man, I really enjoyed this episode. This episode was sick. Getting to see everyone kind of split up into their groups, seeing all of them have to go through different forms of training. Also, getting to see, like, we saw Bomb after he formed his contract. This man was sweating. He could barely keep his head up off the desk. And everyone else was perfectly fine. So either that means that he has a longer way to go to like catch up to his teammates or the person he formed a contract with was much, much more powerful and intense than the people they formed contracts with. And that can, I'm guessing it's the latter because Bomb, he's already able to like control Shinsu pretty well. Like he was able to make this orb, whereas the other dude with the red horn, he was struggling to get his together. So, I mean, I'm really glad that Bomb doesn't seem to be following this kind of protagonist path where they start off super weak 
and then they get carried by like you know something they're born with or i don't know they just i feel like bomb has always had this power inside of him and it's kind of been showing itself every once in a while and now it's kind of starting to come into fruition instead of only showing itself when he's in like desperate situations i guess that's the thing i really like about bomb right now he's not going to be this pathetic weak character until the end of the series it seems like he's always been pretty strong and he is an irregular so clearly there's something about him that he doesn't know yet that separates him from everyone else but anyways I really enjoyed this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching this far into the episode. If you did, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Comment your thoughts on the episode down below and subscribe for more Slice Shonen content. Make sure to check out the Cloud Crowd Discord. Link will be in the description. And also consider supporting me and my channel through Patreon for as low as $2. But with that, I am going to head out. And I will catch you all in the next one. Have a good one.